All right, so in this project, we're gonna build some expanding cards. Basically, we we're gonna style these panels to have a background image and a heading. We're gonna use Flexbox to align everything and then add a little bit of JavaScript so that when we click one of these, it changes the class to active and it then expands with a CSS transition. Okay, so we'll be using JavaScript for the event listeners. We'll be using CSS transitions to give it the smooth, smooth effect. You'll see the heading doesn't come in until the card is fully expanded as well. And we're using just background images and headings, but you could make these into testimonials or uh, FAQs or whatever it might be. So hopefully you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right, so in this video, we're gonna do the HTML and CSS for the expanding cards, and then we'll get into the JavaScript in the next video. So we have our project starter open, I have my index HTML. I'm gonna go ahead and change the title here to expanding cards. And then let's get rid of this H1 here. And this is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna have a container wrapped around five divs with the class of panel. Now for this first one, it'll have a class of panel and also a class of active because that's how we're gonna tell which card is gonna be expanded. It's gonna have a class of active. And inside the div is just gonna be whatever the H3 is. This one is gonna be explore the world. Of course, you can change that if you want. And then we're gonna have an inline style for the background image. So you could easily you know, change that if you want. So let's say background dash image and set that to a URL and single quotes in here with a link to an image, which you could use whatever you want. I'm going to just grab a link to an unsplash image and oops, paste that in between the quotes here. OK, so if I save that, I'm just going to see just the content, which is the H3 with the background image behind it but it's only gonna take up as much as the content does for now. So for the other four panel divs, I'm gonna go right under this, still within the container, and I'm just gonna paste these in, and of course you can grab these from the project repository. And again, they're just panels with a background image in the inline style, and then an H3 in the div. So wild forest, sunny beach, city on winter, mountains, clouds, so we'll save and now we can see all the H3s with a little bit of the background image. So now let's jump into the style sheet and start to make this look, you know, like some cards that we can expand. So the font, I'm going to take this out and say CSS question mark family and set that to MULI. And then let's add that here in the body. So that will change the font. We don't need flex direct direction column um, and then this the rest of this can stay the same for the body now remember we have a container wrapped around uh, all the panels and all I want to do here is display this as a flex box so immediately it's going to turn it into a flex row okay so our container right here is now a flex box so any immediate children which are all these divs are going to be put horizontal into a row if we wanted them on top of each other, we could do flex direction column like that, but we don't. We want them in a row. Now, it takes up 100, you know, 100 viewport widths right now or 100% of the viewport. So I'm going to set the width of the container to 90 VW, which is a viewport width. So if you think of the width as 100 slices going this way, we're taking up 90 of the 100. So the next thing I want to do is the panels. So that's all we need for the container. So for the panel class, it already has the background image, but let's add some other background attributes like the size. Right now you can only see a small portion of the image. Uh, I'm going to set this to auto and 100%. And now you can see you know, much more of the image. I'm going to set the position. So background position I'll set to center and I don't want any repeat. So let's set the background dash repeat to no repeat. OK, and then for the height of these, let's make them not not quite the whole height of the viewport. Let's do 80 VH, so 80 viewport heights. OK, it's starting to look a little better. Let's set the border 
or not, not the border, but the border radius. I'm going to set that to 50 pixels, so make them rounded. And you can style it differently if you'd like. I'm going to set the color of the text inside to be white. I want a cursor pointer so that when I hover over it, we have a cursor. Now the width. We can set the flex property since we're using Flexbox. I'm going to set it to an initial value of 0.5. So they're all going to be even right now. But when we have the active class, what we'll do is we'll change this to something much higher like flex five. Okay, and let's separate these out a bit. So we'll add a margin of 10 pixels. And then let's make this position relative because I want to position the H3s inside absolute. So that means that the the H3 um, container div, which is the or container element, which is the panel has to be relative. And then when we do change the width for the active, like when we click and it turns active, I want it to not just flick to a bigger size or bigger width, but I want it to have a transition. So let's say let's add a transition on the flex property. And we'll make it 0.7 seconds for the duration with an ease in effect. Okay, so we'll save that. Now, before we get to the active class, let's do the H3s that are inside of the panel. So we have panel H3, and I'm going to set the font size to 24 pixels. And let's set the position. So position is going to be absolute. That's why I made this relative. We want the H3 absolute within it and I want it to be at the bottom left corner. So let's say 20 pixels from the bottom and 20 pixels from the left. If I save that. You can see the position has changed. Um, I'm going to set margin to zero on these. And I also only want the H3 to show if it's on if it's active, right? Because this doesn't look good. We can't even read the headings. So let's set the opacity to zero, which will just make them invisible. OK, but we'll sh when it's active, we'll show them. So let's first do the panel if it's active. So we're just saying if the panel div also has an active class, we'll change the flex from 0.5, which is the initial value to five. And now you can see it's much wider for the H3. Let's say panel active H3 and it has an opacity of zero right now for every panel. But if it's active, let's set the opacity to one. That way we can see it if it's active. OK, now I do want to make it so if the screen is really small that th we only show three instead of five of these cards. So to do that, we can add a media query by saying at media. And we can use a, a min or a max width. I'm going to say max width of 480 pixels. And what this means is any styles that I put in here are only going to take effect if the screen is under 480 pixels. So one thing I want to do is the container is initially set to a width of I think it's 90 viewport widths. We're going to set it to 100 viewport widths on small screens so that it takes up a little more room and it gives us some extra space. OK, and then I'm going to remove the last two panels. And the way that I can do that is by saying panel and I can use the pseudo selector by using a, a colon here and then nth dash of dash type. And I want the, the last two. So there's five total. I want four and five so I can take nth of type four. That's going to grab this one, but I also want the fifth one. So I'm just going to copy that, put a comma here and let's also grab the fifth one, the last one and let's set display to none, which will just get rid of them. So now you can see on small screens, there's only three images or three cards. If I go past 480, now there's five. OK, so that's what that media query does for us. I'm just going to make this a little bigger. So that should do it for the CSS. Now, obviously, we want the functionality where we click on one of these and it expands and, you know, the other one gets smaller and we can see whichever one is active. So for that, we need JavaScript. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. OK, so now we want to get into the JavaScript, which is actually going to be fairly simple. And I, this I plan on this being one of the first projects in at least in the first 10. So I'm going to explain kind of stuff that, I, that many of you might already know. 
Now, remember that the whole thing, the whole, what we need to do is just change the class really on each of these. So the first one has a class of active right now. If I put that class on the second one just manually by typing it in here, it's going to show the second one. So I'm going to start with that on the first like I had, but we want to be able to switch that in our JavaScript. So we need to first bring in all of these panels into the into our JavaScript files. So I'm going to create a variable called panels and there's different way to select elements. We can use, you know, get element by D. We can use query selector. So what query selector does is allows us to select anything. It could be, you know, uh, a paragraph, uh, an H1, uh, a class, an ID, whatever. We want the panels which have a class of panel. Now the problem here is there's more than one panel, right? We have all these divs with panels. So we can't just do this or it's just going to select the first one. So we need to use query selector all in that case. And with query selector all, instead of just selecting the element directly, it puts all of the panels into what's called a node list, which is similar to an array. In fact, I can show you that if I console log here panels and we open up our Chrome dev tools here, you'll see that it's going to it prints out this node list which with each div and some properties and I can target specific panels like if I put zero in here because arrays are zero index it's going to give me the very first panel you can see it has a class of active so I could get the second one with one and so on now you can also loop through a node list just like you can with an array and that's what I want to do I want to take my panels and use a for each which is a high order array method and these methods take in a function as an argument so you could do function or what you usually see is an arrow function like this okay and then we need to pass in here whatever we want to use for each iteration these are panels so i'm going to use panel singular and i can console log here panel and it's just going to loop through and show me each panel now what do we actually want to do here we want to have an event listener on each of these so that if we click it something happens. So we'll take each panel and say add event listener and I want to listen for a click. And when that click happens, we're going to run a function. And for that function, let's just do a console log here and I'll just say I don't know 1 2 And if I click on any of these, we're going to log 1 2 3. So I want to whatever one we click on I want to add a class of active. So if I say panel.classlist that gives me a list of the classes. But we also have methods on this classless object like add where we can specifically add a class and I'm going to add a class of active. So now if I let me just close this if I click on this one it gets added the class of active which then changes it to flex 5. If I click on this one, same thing, but you can see that active is still on these other ones. So it's expanding them, but it's not it's not uh, retracting the other ones. So what we'll do is before we we put a class of active, let's remove the class of active on all of the other ones. So I'm going to have a function here called remove active classes and we'll create that down here as a function remove active classes now since there's more than one panel we again we're going to loop through them and then remove all the active classes so we're going to do just what we did above so panel dot for each and in here we'll put an arrow function Now when you have an arrow function with just one argument like this, because we can also get the index, we can get the the complete array, but since we only we only need this one panel, we don't even need these curly um sorry, these parentheses. We can just do this. All right, and up here we can do the same thing. I mean, you can keep them if you want, but you don't have to. And then in here, let's say for the particular panel that we're looping through, we want on the class list object we want to call remove and we want to remove all the active classes. Oops. Okay, so 
Now what's going to happen is when we click, it's going to remove all the active classes from all of them and then put the active class on the one we click. So if I click here, uh, looks like I messed something up. Panel is not defined. Oh, panels. So we're looping through panels here, which is coming from here. All right. So if I click on this, now you'll see we get the effect that we want because right before it adds the active class to this, it takes it off the rest of them. Now, one thing I would like to change, though, is as soon as I click on this, you'll see the H3 and it has that kind of weird falling down effect. So let's add a transition to the opacity on the H3. So I'm going to go to the active H3 and let's add a transition here and let's say opacity. So we want to add a transition on the opacity 0.3 seconds and ease in. And let's add a delay as well. So we'll add 0.4 seconds on the delay. And now if I click, you see that it doesn't actually fade in until the uh, until the card is fully expanded, which is a lot smoother than how it was before. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, you can make these into any kind of card. It doesn't have to be just a heading with a background image. It could be like a testimonial or absolutely anything you want. So hopefully this helps you in building further projects with little widgets like this.